Many years ago, a remarkable story began in the life of Quinton Evans. At that time, Quinton was residing in an abandoned trailer that he had equipped to meet his basic needs. He was a homeless man, known for his resilience, and he had an amputated leg. Despite his challenging circumstances, Quinton didn't resort to alcohol abuse, preferring to blend in with the rest of the citizens. There were two individuals who knew the real story behind Quinton's injury. It wasn't the result of a random accident, but rather a consequence of a grueling military operation. In a distant eastern country, in the world of the Marine Corps, no mission is considered impossible. But the one Quinton participated in turned out to be just that. Under heavy enemy fire, the Marines had to adopt an all-round defensive stance to repel the relentless enemy assault. Unfortunately, when the smoke cleared, it was evident that Sergeant Quinton Evans had suffered severe injuries. Thanks to the quick thinking of the unit's commander, Quinton was rushed to a hospital where his life was saved. Nevertheless, despite the best efforts of the medical team, they couldn't save Quinton's left leg. This marked the end of his dreams of returning to civilian life, which he had grown unaccustomed to during his military service. Little did Quinton know that fate had more trials in store for him. Upon returning to his hometown in northern Kentucky, he faced a complete lack of support from his fiancée, Pamela. Some individuals are unwilling to face the challenges that come with being in a relationship with a disabled person. Even if that person is a war hero like Quinton, Pamela was one of those individuals, and she chose to break up with him upon learning about his condition. Left alone and battling with PTSD, Quinton struggled to find his place in life. In a small provincial town, job opportunities were scarce. Especially for a disabled person. Holding his Purple Heart medal in his hand, Quinton bitterly cursed fate for its cruelty. His situation worsened when he started drinking, which only added to his problems. One fateful day, in a state of drunken carelessness, Quinton started a fire that consumed his parents' home, leaving him homeless and destitute. It was then that Quinton realized just how far he had fallen on the social ladder, finding himself among other homeless individuals and beggars. However, Quinton had reached a turning point. He no longer blamed others for his troubles, and refused to resort to begging for alms. He summoned the strength to quit drinking, and gradually adapted to his new reality, a reality without a fiancé, a home, or a job. Quinton honed his skills in repairing electronic devices, becoming proficient at it. This newfound skill allowed him to earn a modest income, and soon, people in his circle knew they could rely on him to fix their broken gadgets. While it didn't make him rich, for a man who had once had nothing, it felt like a significant achievement. Additionally, Quinton had mastered using his prosthetic leg, allowing him to move around without crutches and with just a cane for support. Moreover, through his new line of work, Quinton encountered the love of his life. By that time, he had moved into the trailer, which served both as his home and his repair shop. On a memorable July morning, Evelyn Dawson brought Quinton a malfunctioning iron. And after he replaced a faulty part, it worked flawlessly once more. This encounter marked the beginning of a new chapter in Quinton's life. Thank you, you're so talented. The woman whispered, causing Quinton, the former Marine, to blush with embarrassment. Evelyn and Quinton had struck up a conversation, without even realizing how they got to talking. There was an undeniable connection between them. And it was this meeting in the trailer that marked the beginning of their rapidly developing relationship. Evelyn had a failed marriage in her past that ended in divorce. Due to her tyrant husband, in contrast to Quinton, she owned an old house inherited from her late grandmother. Evelyn worked as a cook in a roadside cafe, and her culinary skills resulted in delightful lunches and dinners for Quinton. One day, as Quinton was on his way to a hardware store to purchase spare parts for his repairs, 
He witnessed a young boy, about seven years old, stealing a bun from the counter. The boy was darting away, hoping to evade the vendor chasing him. The distance between the boy and his pursuer was diminishing rapidly. When Quinton intervened, he grasped the young thief's hand and pulled the boy towards him, surprising the vendor who froze in disbelief. The vendor stammered, you should be on your way. Leave this little thief to me. But Quinton had other plans. He firmly responded, the boy will stay with me. In return, I will reimburse the cost of what he stole. And I'll even pay you a little extra. Upon seeing the medal on Quinton's chest, the vendor realized it wasn't wise to confront the seemingly destitute and disabled man who had nothing to lose. Accepting the money offered by the former Marine, the vendor opted for a peaceful resolution and left, feeling like a hero. Meanwhile, Quinton held the boy's hand and inquired. Why did you do that, kid? Do you want to end up in prison? It's a tough place to be. The child sighed sadly and took a bite out of the bun Quinton had paid for. I'm an orphan. I live in an orphanage, but I run away often when I'm very hungry. My name is Simon, the boy answered, chewing the bun. Understanding Simon's plight, Quinton nodded empathetically. He knew firsthand the hardships of poverty and the challenges Simon faced. As they talked further, Quinton's heartstrings were tugged. I'm almost 45, and I still don't have children, Quinton thought to himself. He realized that he and Evelyn, his partner, were not getting any younger. Quinton bought Simon a generous bag of sweets. And promised more if he refrained from stealing. Simon exclaimed joyfully, I won't, sir, I promise. Why would I steal now when I have so much food? Quinton patted Simon on the shoulder and limped away to attend to his business. However, he couldn't stop thinking about the young orphan. Later that evening, he shared his encounter with Evelyn. Maybe we should adopt him. We're not young anymore, and when will we start our family, if ever? Quinton suggested during dinner. Evelyn's eyes lit up with joy, and Quinton realized he had struck a chord. Few people knew that one of the reasons for her divorce was her inability to have children. Most women dream of becoming mothers one day, and Evelyn was no exception. Unfortunately, she had been dealing with health issues for several years, making it impossible for her to conceive on her own. With Evelyn's approval, Quinton had only one question left. But how will Simon react to this? To Quinton's relief, the boy eagerly accepted the offer to become his adopted son. Simon was so tired of the dreary orphanage, the meager food, and the bleak future that he was willing to do anything to get adopted by Quinton Evans as soon as possible. It took approximately two months to complete all the necessary paperwork. During that time, Quinton set up a room for Simon in Evelyn's house. Little Simon deeply appreciated the efforts of his adoptive parents, and immediately gave them both affectionate kisses. Now we have a real family, Quinton remarked with a beaming smile. A moment he had waited for many long years. Three years flew by, and during this time, Simon had started attending school. Where he had to confront social injustice once again. Other children in his class came from more affluent families. And quickly noticed that the son of the disabled repairman. Was different from everyone else. Simon never had any pocket money because he diligently saved every bit of it in a piggy bank, intending to use it to purchase a school uniform, to avoid disappointing his parents, who might expect him to spend the money on school meals. Simon kept his plan to himself. However, the challenges he faced extended beyond his meager finances. Simon was subjected to bullying by his entire class. Your father is just a one-legged pirate. Where did he lose his leg? And your mother is just a cook at the roadside cafeteria, his classmates would taunt. In his efforts to protect himself and defend his parents' honor, Simon often found himself in fights. Though he always ended up outnumbered and defeated. The relentless bullying took a toll on Simon's grades. 
much to the distress of Quinton and Evelyn. As time passed, Simon's experiences at school grew increasingly unbearable. By his senior year, he had become an outcast who faced bullying from nearly everyone in the school. The constant torment had pushed him to the brink of quitting school altogether. However, his parents always intervened to prevent him from taking such a drastic step. Simon had already decided that he wouldn't attend the prom, because he lacked the appropriate attire. He didn't want to burden his parents. Especially as his mother had been seriously ill for three years. And most of the family's income was devoted to her medical treatment. For days, Quentin tirelessly sought ways to improve the family's precarious financial situation. But his efforts proved futile. Rejected by the bank when he applied for a loan, Quentin fell into a deep depression, feeling as though luck had once again abandoned him. With the family seemingly falling apart, Quentin had used the remaining funds to purchase a suit for Simon, and insisted that his son attend the prom. Don't be afraid of difficulties, son. Life is often unfair, but you must stay strong. Quinton reassured Simon with the resolve of a true Marine. In that moment, Simon felt an incredible strength in his father's words, and decided to attend the prom despite the expected ridicule. As anticipated, Simon didn't enjoy the prom one bit, but that was no longer the point. He was grateful that his school days were finally behind him, and he looked forward to starting a new phase of his life. However, before Simon could apply to university, his parents were summoned to the police station. Anxious and concerned, they wondered if their son had done something illegal. Yet, when the couple arrived at the police station, they were in for a surprising twist of events. First and foremost, Simon hadn't done anything wrong. It turned out that some wealthy relatives of his late father were searching for him. Barbara and Howard Perez claimed that Simon was their grandson. Quinton expressed uncertainty, saying, But our son grew up in an orphanage. This must be some kind of mistake. However, the elderly couple stood firm. They had already hired a private investigator to find Simon, who had been living with his adoptive parents for several years now. As it turned out, their son David had dated a woman named Megan in his youth. Their relationship had developed rapidly and been intense but had ended painfully. Megan had become pregnant, and eight months later, she tragically passed away due to extensive bleeding, leaving behind a baby boy. Simon, who ended up in an orphanage. The couple had only recently learned about this when a friend of Megan's told them. Prompting their quest to find their grandson, Howard Perez continued, Our son David died in a car accident a year ago. And now we're left without an heir, which is simply unacceptable for us. Tears welled up in Quinton's eyes at the thought of potentially losing Simon. However, Barbara Perez reassured him. Saying, don't worry, sir. We're not going to fight for custody of Simon. You've done so much for him. I don't think we'll ever be able to repay you for it. Quinton visibly relaxed. Upon realizing that the couple didn't intend to take Simon away, but rather wanted to assist him in finding his path in life. A few days later, Simon was already enrolled at one of the country's top universities, gaining invaluable knowledge. Throughout his time at the university, Simon maintained contact not only with his adoptive parents, but also with his newfound grandparents. After graduating from the university, Simon secured a managerial position at one of Howard Perez's firms, who was pleased to see his grandson take an interest in the family business. Over the next decade, Simon became exceptionally successful, even surprising himself with his accomplishments. Around ten years later, Simon received an invitation to his high school reunion. Through a social media messenger, the reunion was held at a restaurant and his former classmates attended, unaware of Simon's success. They still perceived him, as the disabled Marine's son living in challenging circumstances. 
when a convoy of expensive cars pulled up to the restaurant. None of his classmates could believe their eyes. Is that Simon? Simon Evans. Look at the beautiful woman he's with, they exclaimed. Simon greeted his classmates and treated them to a lavish dinner. Featuring exotic dishes and expensive drinks. Throughout the event. He tried to ignore the envious glances from those who had once bullied him. And focused on the promising future that awaited him. During the reunion. Simon took the impromptu stage to thank his parents, who were also present. Evelyn and Quinton couldn't hold back tears. But this time, they were tears of joy, not sadness or despair. After enduring numerous hardships. They had finally found the family happiness they had always dreamed of. Sarah, a grieving mother. Found herself in a challenging situation as she navigated life. After a devastating bus accident that left her son's fate unknown. Despite her overwhelming grief and uncertainty. Sarah's determination to find her son remained unwavering. After months in the hospital. And endless searches through foster homes and surviving families. Sarah hired a private investigator to assist in the quest to reunite with her son. However, as time passed without any significant leads. Sarah's resources dwindled, and she faced the heartbreaking reality that she might never see her son again. Reluctantly, she made the difficult decision to suspend her search. Driven by the financial strain and emotional toll it had taken on her. With a heavy heart, Sarah turned her focus toward rebuilding her life. She landed a cashier position at a local store. But the constant financial instability due to late or withheld wages pushed her to seek alternative employment. Sarah eventually found work cleaning houses for wealthy families. Despite facing doubts about her ability due to her age, she refused to let these challenges define her, persistently seeking opportunities and proving her determination. Despite the repeated rejections and the weight of her past, Sarah's hope endured. One morning, she stumbled upon a nanny job listing that appeared promising, reigniting her excitement and optimism for a fresh start. The next day, Sarah arrived at the elegant house for her interview, her heart pounding with nervous anticipation. As she knocked on the door, it swung open to reveal the young millionaire, a kind and welcoming smile on his face. They sat down for the interview, and Sarah poured her heart into explaining her love for children and her caregiving experience. The man listened intently, genuinely interested in her passion for the role. A connection seemed to spark between them during the conversation. To Sarah's delight, the millionaire offered her the nanny job on the spot. Overwhelmed with gratitude, she accepted the position. Knowing it was a chance for a fresh start. The millionaire explained that he and his busy spouse needed someone loving and nurturing to care for their toddler. And Sarah seemed like the perfect fit. Moved by this opportunity, Sarah moved into the house, ready to embrace her new role as part of this welcoming family. As she settled in as the nanny for the millionaire couple's adorable toddler, the house filled with the sounds of giggles and laughter, bringing joy to the couple's hearts. They were delighted with Sarah's care and affection towards their child. However, Sarah couldn't help but notice a peculiar connection. She felt with the millionaire whenever he was home. It was as if their hearts recognized each other in some unexplainable way. A deep connection only a parent could understand. Despite these feelings, Sarah reminded herself that her primary focus was the child's happiness and well-being. Every night, when the mansion was quiet, Sarah found solace in her room. Gazing at a photograph of her beloved son, whose absence still haunted her. Her heart, though committed to her nanny duties, continued to draw towards the millionaire. Observing his interactions with their child, and the love he showered upon the little one. Eight months later, during the millionaire's birthday celebration, Sarah was invited as a cherished member of their family. As he delivered his speech, he expressed his gratitude to Sarah. 
acknowledging her as more than just a nanny. He shared how she had become a guiding light during their difficult times. And recounted the story of the bus accident that nearly took his life. Sarah's shock was palpable as she realized that he had been miraculously rescued. By a loving couple, the same accident that had separated her from her son. Unable to contain her emotions. She broke down in tears and bravely shared her own painful story. The room fell silent as everyone listened with empathy. Realizing the depth of her sorrow and the connection that had formed between them, determined to uncover the truth, they decided to undergo a DNA test. The results were undeniable, Sarah and the millionaire were connected by blood. He was her long-lost son. Overwhelmed with emotion, they embraced. Their hearts finally finding each other after years of separation. The millionaire's adopted parents were deeply moved by the reunion and extended their hands in love. Sarah expressed her gratitude for the life they had provided for her son, whom they had raised as their own. In that moment of reconciliation and acceptance, all wounds began to heal. Sarah continued to live in her son's house, but this time as a mother and grandmother. It was a perfect reunion, a heartwarming tale of love and resilience that touched the lives of everyone involved.